Hello and welcome to another week of energy readings with myself Thomas Janak and as you can see I'm not in my house because I do have a guest. This is Kevin Orchard and he will help me today with the readings. We're looking at the week of the first full April week so to speak which is the 2nd of April to the 8th. So that's the week we're going to, to look at today and before we go into the individual star signs we will have a look at the overall energy for this week. Have a look, see where we are. Okay, overall energy for all of us. It's quite important we have the goat and the dog. And that means that we need to realize that we will not fail. No matter what happens this week, you and, you and I, we will all be fine. Um, we have the goat, and I say this a lot when the goat comes up, uh, it denotes being an animal that hangs on, on a cliff on two legs and doesn't fall. So uh, you can be steadfast and you will be just fine. The other side of, uh, of the goat is that unfortunately they are they're quite often sacrificed. Um, so you have to make, uh, you have to have a, a closer look at your relations uh, this week um, and see if you're probably doing too much and then throttle back a little bit because the second animal guide that you have for this week or that we all have for this week is the dog. And that means that loyalty starts with you. You have to be loyal to yourself this week. Um, it doesn't mean you, you, have to, you, you don't need to be loyal to anybody else, if that makes sense. But the most important person this week has to be yourself. So pay attention to, to how your life plays out and have faith and trust that you will be fine this week. Because, because you have the goat, nothing major is, is going to happen um, that will upset us. And if there is something in the individual star signs, then obviously that's what we're giving you advice for, um, to have a look what's going on. And I let Kevin uh, kick off, and we're starting with the star sign of Aries. Right, let's have a look at Aries. See what we've got coming up for Aries. My mom's an Aries, by the way. Hello, mm -hmm. mom, if you're watching. Yes. <laughs> Her birthday coming up, so... She's had Mother's Day, I've got no money left for a present oh, there you go. for her birthday, so <laughs> I'll have to make something for a found in the woods. Yeah, absolutely. So, Aries, what's coming up for Aries? Ooh, I like it. So, for Aries, you've got the archetype card of the teacher, which the light attribute is the ability to communicate knowledge, experience, skill and wisdom. But the shadow side of that is manipulating or abusing students, teaching negative traits and destructive skills. So be mindful of when you're teaching people or when you're talking to people or bringing up younger children, where you're coming from. And when you have that influence, there's a responsibility with it to bring that up. So you are teachers this, this, this month coming up. So just remember, be mindful and considerate of what you're teaching. Mm -hmm. Okay, that was Aries. Have a look. We're now we're having a look at Taurus. And like I always said, it's my, my sister and my dad are both Tauruses. And um, as I always say at that point in time, <laughs> when, we, when we look at Tauruses, um, one of the, 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 the things that Taurus has oftentimes is that they can be their own worst enemy um, and the good thing is in the last couple of weeks it hasn't really shown um, itself if that makes sense so we're looking at the first full week of April 2018 let's have a look if that good trend <laughs> continues we're looking at Taurus right now for Taurus this week it's um, going to be um, a reflective week or should be a reflective week because remember you have free will you can do whatever the heck you want and can override a lot of stuff. You have the grey fox, which means you are quite an old soul. And it's, it's important that you realize that you are an old soul because that would allow you to realize that you have been around the clock a lot. You have been in loads of situations that at the time you thought were unfixable and yet you're still here. You, you, you survived it and you probably solved a lot of stuff along the way. So um, don't be worried about situations that feel difficult because as always, you will be just fine. You also have the osprey, and this is another um, symbol for making progress. 
Um, and remember we had the goat earlier being on two legs and, and, and don't fall. So this is another week uh, or another sign for you uh, Tauruses this week to realize you have made a lot of progress. And it's the second time that this comes up because it sort of came up in the overall energy. So um, be that person this week that, that has some uh, trust in your abilities and are, are not too harsh with yourself. Um, and always remember that no matter what life threw at you thus far, you managed, right? Short and sweet for Taurus, going into Gemini now. Out with the Gemini once. Oh, <laughs> an interesting experience. Right. Yeah, she liked me. Her husband wasn't too keen. No. <laughs> we won't be naming names. No, 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 no. We live and learn. Yeah, we absolutely. live and learn. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> learn from my mistakes, <laughs> as did the Gemini. <laughs> so, what's coming up for the Gemini? Oh. So Gemini this week, the athlete, light attributes of the archetype are dedication to transcending physical limits, including handicaps, development of personal willpower and strength of spirit. Now I'm feeling this is all about the Gemini, not sitting back on your laurels, but pushing yourself forwards and making things happen, pushing through the pain barrier and making it happen. There's a picture there of Charles Atlas type person with the world lifting it up like he's the king of the world and he has that power. So it's overcoming great obstacles and having that ability if you push yourself. The shadow side of that is misuse of athletic ability for selfish ends. Um, a full sense of invulnerability and entitlement. So be careful of those whilst you're feeling in your pump, but push yourself. You've got the willpower, you've got the strength of spirit, go for it. Good week there, I feel. Absolutely, we're going into Cancerians, Cancer. My beautiful girlfriend is Cancer. So let's see what's coming up for her and all of the rest of you Cancers out there. Cancerians, let's have a look. For the Cancerians, it's important to realize this week that you're still healing. There's still stuff inside you that isn't quite resolved, that isn't quite healed. And the softer you are in all your relations, the less you panic, the less you um, overanalyze, the better you will actually heal this week. You have the snowy owl and the black bear. And the snowy owl is the animal that tells you, even though you may feel that you, that you are isolated, because the snowy owl is an animal that lives uh, in the Arctic, uh, region where, where, where scarcity is a problem and um, opportunities are, are not always presenting themselves readily. Um, so should you feel a little bit stuck, um, then remember that you're also very versatile. So in, in other words, this is a week to focus on your healing of old patterns and of things that, that you know are sitting inside you. But do it gently. Do it slowly and first and foremost, this is a really important week for Cancerians to nurture yourself. Do what you feel does you a world of good. And then, you know, do that uh, and hire your energy that way. Okay? That was short and sweet for Cancerians going into Leos. And um, my son, Kevin, namesake of yours, in, in, in Germany is a Leo. It's a good so, name. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. Let's just see what's going on for Leos. Leos? have got the lover. Light attributes. The great passion and devotion, unbridled appreciation of someone or something. So don't hold back this week. You're throwing yourself into it and you're going for it, which is typical of a Leo anyway. Um, and the shadow attributes of being obsessive and a passion that harms others and self-destructive devotion. So hold a bit back, go for it. Be, be the lover, be unbridled in your passion, but keep a bit back for you. Um, and remember not to... Uh, to be too overbearing, but yeah, I feel that's a good week. The lovely card there for the for the Leos. My yeah. dad's a Leo, by the way, so uh, so there you go. Yeah. Mm. yeah, And now we're going into Virgo. Let's have a, let's have a look for Virgo. Interesting. Virgos this week, you have the the parrot and 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 fish as a as an overall. Uh, species and what that really means is that you need 
some space this week. You need some me time. You need a space that where you can retreat to, where no one else is allowed. So it is important this week to not be overly active, if that makes sense. Don't go to 25,000 meetings, if that makes sense. Right? Don't do too many things with people. Um, even if you enjoy being, being um, out and about, you will probably end up uh, looking at other people's lives, um, overriding your needs to um, be with yourself a little bit. Um, and this is all about uh, healing, if that makes sense. Uh, so, so just like, like the Cancerians earlier, um, there are things that are supposed to be healing, and this is a good reading, uh, week energetically uh, for this healing to commence properly. Um, but it is important that you that you take that time out to give you that um, uh, opportunity uh, and to to get all the possibilities in for you to to go into healing. The other thing is this week, and that's really important too. Um, you are not supposed to explain yourself to others. This is a week where you speak your truth, uh, as hopefully in all weeks anyway. Um, if someone doesn't get you, explaining yourself to them will not change that this week. So this week, be, if possible, more or less on your own. Do your own, do your own thing. And first and foremost, if someone wants to have a deep conversation about stuff that you do, postpone it to next week, because this week you will be misunderstood. Okay? That was Virgo going into Libra. Libra. That's good coffee, by the way. It's not bad, is it? It's, it's, not, it's not the, bad. Uh, the finest um, economy coffee that Tesco can mm. provide. There you go. And sometimes the... Because last year I actually sort of weaned myself off coffee. So I, I only have coffee when I'm out and about. And because I'm at Kevin's today, so I'm out and about, I have a cup of coffee. And it actually makes a big difference because I'm, 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 now that I'm sort of more into tea, mm. I feel like I'm a bit sharper because I, I, I used to drink coffee for about 30 years. Yeah. But then I overdid it, you know, when you drink yeah, a lot yeah, of coffee, yeah, you yeah. drink a lot of coffee kind of thing. So, so the weaning off was actually quite, quite helpful. I've done the same thing myself years ago. I was a big coffee fan and now I just love tea. I'm a big tea man. Mm -hmm. Tea is one of my favourite things in the world. Okay. So um, we are, so uh, we are, uh, with, are we with Libra? We're with Libra. Yeah. And the light attribute is uh, spotlighting your positive seduction qualities. You've got the card of the Don Juan. Oh. The Don Juan, that's something that I embody a lot. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> only on a Wednesday. Um, <laughs> spotlights your positive seductive qualities, uh, your shadow attributes, using the power of romantic attraction for private agendas. So be aware of those shadow attributes, but it's asking you to step into the light this week and it spotlights your positive, seductive qualities. So value yourself, Libra. Know that you can be all you can. Get your pom-pom, pop your collar and go for it. Absolutely. And it's interesting because we had, we had Libra, uh, sorry, we, so we had Leo earlier, uh, having a lover card and now mm. we have the one card. And when you look at it energetically, if this comes up more than once in a way, there seems to be a pattern then for for love as a topic to come in which also means for the for the other star signs for all us other star signs who are not fortunate enough this week to get a lover card <laughs> mm -hmm. kind of thing um uh, love is always the answer and it makes sense then this week to be in a kinder spot right so um that was libra going into scorpio let's have a look what's what's there for the scorpios there you go is that you That's me. Oh, there, there you go Oh, you're going to like this. <laughs> These cards have uh, animal deities. So every card denotes a deity. What Scorpios have is the plural of that, which means all animal deities. In other words, this week, you are fully surrounded by all your guides. So if there's anything that is difficult uh, for, for, for Scorpio, or that has been difficult, or, or feels like you're not quite getting there, this is the week where you get there. Because the other um, animal deity that comes to your rescue is actually the cat. And the cat is a domesticated cat. So that means the most, the most social cat actually is the lion. So we're talking about domesticated cats. So what is important is for all you Scorpios out there, if you feel, uh, I'm not going to be bothered this week with people, then honor that. So if you feel like I should walk away a little bit, do, do something that um, allows me to be free, then by, 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 by all means do that if that makes sense. The downside is, should you remove yourself too much, 
you're not really looking at a pattern that is absolutely able to go and shift this week. So the, ba the, the, the principle is to find a balance, if that makes sense, because as, as anybody knows who ever had a, a cat, a domesticated cat, they are super affectionate when they want it. So you have the option to choose which way you want to go this week, um, and you don't have to choose for the whole week. You can choose by situations, if that makes sense. But the good thing is, and this is the, the most important message here for Scorpio, is that you have all the guides you, all, you, you, you ever need uh, around you in full. So this is the week to look for changes and trust that you're not going there uh, and not going through it on your own. Okay? That was Scorpio going into Sagittarius. Sagittarius. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, typical Sagittarius card. The <laughs> rebel. Light attributes, <laughs> challenges, challenges authority to affect social change, reject spiritual systems that do not serve in a need. It just so speaks of my mate Joe, this does. <laughs> Brilliant, he's like the incarnation of Buddha, but he really does push the boundaries. And the shadow side to be aware of was rejecting legitimate authority out of anger, and rebels out of peer pressure or fashion. What that's telling me is to be mindful of habitual responses and response, respond instead to what's there and not just how you habitually respond. So be aware of that, but keep challenging the authority, do what you do best, be that wounded healer and go for it. Absolutely. And now we're going into Capricorn. Let's have a look for Capricorn. Interesting. Capricorns have the fox and the lion. And what that means is you have canine and feline um, deities around you, which means this is a week where you have to realize no matter what comes your way, you'll manage. Because you can adapt and be feisty at the same time. You can always make sure, um, even though you're loyal to people, that you have enough boundaries for them not to overstep their boundaries with, that they have with regards to you. So this is a perfect week, actually, um, to, to have a closer look at how much time and space you give to specific people. And then you might actually end up feeling, well, you know, um, they're taking quite a lot of my time and you can't even do other things. So you reflect on these situations and get them out kindly, if that makes sense, because you're looking after yourself as you're doing it. So there's not much more information here. Uh, the main message is that no matter what happens this week, you can speak your truth, you can have more boundaries, you can even put people in their place, if that makes sense. But because you have the fox, which is an old soul and a canine, you're not going to lose people because you will say your and make your points um, very gently and very kind. And uh, again, we had that pattern before where kindness is quite important. So, so be that person and everything's going to be good. And now we're going into the last star sign of uh, the week. Uh, next one is um, Aquarius. Aquarius. <coughs> Oh, Aquarius, you've got the slave card. Surrendering your power of choice to the divine with complete trust. So it's all about surrendering and giving up and know, know that it's all going to be looked after for you instead of trying to force things to happen and be, be a slave to life. And the shadow attribute is giving your willpower to an external authority out of fear of making your own choices. Well, that's interesting that both those are there so the light attribute of, of the slave archetype is surrendering your power to the choice of the divine with complete trust but the shadow is not taking enough responsibility and not stepping into it into yourself enough to make your own choices and giving too much away we all know people in the the holistic sort of development trade that will say, oh, well, it's not meant to be. And you think, well, make it be then. Make it happen. Yeah. Don't just surrender everything. Make it happen. Oh, I'm late because I wasn't meant to. Well, no, you're late because you made some bad choices. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and also, it's, sometimes it's about feeling 
what's going on. Mm. It, it, it is oftentimes too black and white when you say, oh, yeah, I missed it, so I wasn't going yeah. to be here. Yeah. Uh, because there, there are reasons. Even if you are delayed, uh, that in itself can be a message. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, okay, that was Aquarius going into the final star sign, which is my star sign, Pisces. Let's have a look at what's going on this week and the car fell out, that's funny. So when the car falls out, they obviously have something to say. Oh, interesting. A really weird combination uh, we have here this week for, for us Pisces. We have, because we have the seahorse and the butterfly. And what the seahorse denotes is that 90% of seahorses do not really make it in captivity. So this is a week to pay attention to what situations in life and what people in your life, what kind of people in your life, um, have an effect of holding you back, um, putting you down almost, if that makes sense. Right? So, so pay attention and realize that you have the right to be a little bit, uh, a bit more free, if that makes sense, freer. Um, and when you make your choices and have a look around you, what's going, what's going on, and really pay attention, you will move on from things. And the next uh, deity that we have is the butterfly. So us Pisces, we are absolutely capable and ready to change things for the better and go to the next phase. That also, um, that's what I'm feeling strongly this week uh, for, for Pisces, um, even though it may not happen to all Pisces, if that makes sense. This is very much related to your love life. If you feel that non-acting in your love life, in your relationship that is. Um, always doing the same thing, maybe out of, you know, safety thing. You know, let's do the same thing, let's not be too pushy, <laughs> this kind of thing, which is all well and good. This is the week, if you feel to progress in a relationship, um, start that topic, say, speak your truth, say that you would like to have this on a different level, um, and, and you are ready to, to make that known and, and make yourself heard and known, right? So that's all we have this week. Um, Kevin, thank you very much. And thank I you. see you all next week, hopefully. Until then, bye-bye.